Yeah, hello again, it's Scott here. I've got a short video for you on how to do the valve shims on the KTM EXC. It can be quite an expensive job if you get the shop to do it because uh, it's quite labour intensive, but it's very simple to do. And uh, I've uh, set up a spreadsheet for you to do all the calculations. So I hope you find this very helpful. First thing I'm going to do is take the seat off. And to do that, there's an 8mm bolt just under here so I don't need to show you how to take that off you just undo that pull the seat off let's do that first and then we'll remove the tank so I've removed that eight millimeter bolt this just unclips and then I can pull that off now we'll remove the fuel tank which means undoing this bolt here and undoing this fuel line here make sure the fuel tap is off so I've unclipped that I've taken that bolt out and now the tank lifts up from the front like that and I can just lift the thing off so very simple to get the tank off and the seat off next step is to give this a bit of a clean with some degreaser just so we don't get any dirt in there when we remove the rocker cover. So I've given the whole rocker cover head area a clean and degreaser. First thing we're going to do is take the spark plug out. So using a 10mm socket we'll take the four bolts off holding the rocket cover. So I've got all the four bolts out. What we have to do now is turn the engine over to get that little mark there lined up with that mark there because we want the engine at top dead centre so that both valves, um, all four valves are closed. So we should be able to turn the engine over from the counter shaft sprocket, just put it in gear. I've got a 17mm socket on the counter shaft sprocket there, or on the front sprocket, I'm going to turn the engine over. Before you check the existing um, valve clearances, just check the torque on the four bolts here that hold the shaft, the uh, rock shafts in place, because um, often these bolts will loosen off a bit and um, that will affect the clearances. So just torque them to 15 Newton meters, check that they are at 15 Newton meters before you check your valve clearances because you'll get false readings. So what we have to do now is we have to measure the existing clearances between the um, top of the valve there and the rocker. So you need to get yourself some metric feeler gauges. And you can combine them so you'll have a 0.1, a 0.15 and a 0.2 but then they have a bunch of smaller ones um, let's, I'll just show you how to do the, do one, I don't need to show you how to do them all, so this is the inlet side, there's, there's two valves, so you have to do each one, there's only one rocker um, which operates both valves and then on the other side you've got the two exhaust valves, so let's just do this one, so that's, that's a 0.15 so put a bit of pressure on the rocker. So it's a trial and error process, so the 0.15 slips in there quite easily. So what I'll do is I'll try point, I'll go up to 0.16. So that means I'm going to have to use the, the 0.1 and the 
and the 0.06. So we'll try that. And that's actually that's gone in there, and it's it's a firm fit. So I would I would say that's a a 0.16. So that's my recording of the um, uh, existing clearances. Now both the inlets are out of spec and that exhaust is out of spec and that's right on the limit. So I'm going to need to put new shims. So what we have to do now is remove the rockers and that's a simple job on the spike. There's four bolts to undo so there's a 10mm there and there and then there's two on the other side, one there and one there. So all I'm going to do is um, remove the uh, tank holding rubber on both sides so I can get to that one and then I'll just remove these four bolts. The next step is we have to remove these two caps to be able to gain access to the shaft. Both of these have O-rings on them so just check the condition, replace them if you need to. So I ended up putting a small paint mark on the end of the shafts. Now the end of the each shaft has a six millimeter threaded hole so that you just need a, a six mil um, bolt and just screw it in a few turns and then you should be able to just pull it out like that so with the shafts out I should just be able to lift those straight off so that's the inlet pocket So now what we have to do is take these shims off the top of the valve. Very important to record the thickness of it and make sure you record the right thickness for the right valve. So just use a magnet. So that's the left hand, the left hand um, inlet valve. So I'm going to see what it is and write it down here. So you can see the, the etching for the shim size is actually worn off. So I'm going to have to measure it with the verniers. Measure twice. So lucky I zeroed it, so it's 2.7. Let's check it again. 2.7. So now I'll write that down on my little sheet. So I've tried to make life easier for everyone. Um, I've come up with this spreadsheet which will do the calculations for you. So at the top here just input your bike and input the specified uh, clearance for your exhaust valves, the range. So in the case of the KTM 530 they specify 0.12 to 0.17 millimetres is the clearance for the exhaust and they specify 0.1 0.15 for the intake. So we're only going to use uh, this column here because uh, you can use this for a forcing on the bike if you like. And uh, I'll have a link down below so you can download the spreadsheet for your own convenience. So here's the, uh, the actual um, clearances. So here, these numbers here. So let's input those. So that one is 0 0.18 and the next one was 0 0.17 and then the inlet was 0.16 and 0.17 
and then in these columns here we input the size of the existing shim. So I've written the shim sizes down here. So that one is 2.74, the next one's 2.77, and that one was 2.7, and that one was 2.74. So this is where the calculations are done. So it shows you the minimum and maximum shim to put in to get your clearance within the range up here. So when I look at the calculated shim sizes, I'm going to go for the larger size because I want the clearance to be at the, at the lower end of what I'm allowed. Now my shim kit gives me 2.75 shims and it gives me 2.8. I've got nothing in between. so. Uh, I'm going to use, in this case, I'll use uh, 2.8. Now, if the cell goes green, it means that that's good. It's it's within the tolerances. And I'm going to use a 2.8 in the other exhaust one. So you can see the 2.8 falls between um, that range. Now, on the inlet side, I'm going to use 2.75s. That's gone green, and another 2.75 there too. No, that one didn't. Two, so you can see here, 2.75 is below the range, so it hasn't turned green. So I need to use a 2.8. So you need to get yourself a valve shim kit. So here it is. I get um, this thing gives me three shims of all the different sizes. Okay, I'm just going to put a bit of rag down here because I hate to drop a shim down there. So I've got three 2.8 shims there. So we need them on both exhaust valves. And then <coughs> the last one requires a 2.75 last inlet on the left hand side. Let's start putting this back together. So, get the, here's the rocker for the inlet side. Let's just drop that in there. Here's the exhaust the rocker that goes in here. And when you put these rocker shafts back in, make sure you put them in the correct way. The only one end has a thread. So you won't get that wrong. So you put your M6 in and then you can slide it in. But just look at them closely and you'll see the, the side there that has visible marks on it um, goes on the bottom. So that's because the pressure from the rocker is on the bottom. So you can, you can sort it, you can just slightly see the marks there. So that's, that's the top, because that's nice and shiny, and that's the bottom. And then you just slide it in and line the holes up. It's like that, it's very easy. I've already put the uh, exhaust one in. Put the, put the bolts in. And the two bolts on the right hand side are shorter.
Now these uh, bolts are done up to 15 newton meters. It's got my little torque wrench here. So I've just measured the existing clearance here and it's 0.12 of a millimetre. So I had to use the, um, the 08 and the 04 and the other one's the same. So everything's back together now and ready to put the rocker cover back on. I just put a bit of molybdenum uh, grease on the rollers. Check the spark plug gap while it's out. 0.8 to 0.9 millimetres. So it's 0.8. <coughs> yeah, so it's fine. I also put a just a, a bit of anti seize aluminium anti seize grease on it. Put the rocker breather hose back in. 